Keebly is arguably one of the dragons Mings of Fire that has fascinated me the most. His humorous, helpful, and more lighthearted side really has its time to shine in the series, and fans loved him. But is Keebly really who people remember him as? There's a major part of his personality and one of his biggest flaws that has gone unnoticed and ignored within the Wings of Fire community, so today I'll be giving this side of Keebly some justice. Because there's more to the outclass Sandwing Dragonette than meets the eye, and it shocks me how open he was in his POV about what he truly thought of other dragons and of the world as a whole. I feel like fans have really only paid attention to the part of Kiba that Tui wants us to see, the witty jokester of the group with a heart of gold. But is this all Kibli is? And is there going to be a time where his inner demons are going to get the best of him? Because I do believe this to have been very close to happening in the series, and it could have been devastating. So today, I'll be discussing something I've wanted to cover ever since I started doing Wings of Fire content, Kibli's darker side. Considering how this really has been discussed in depth, I thought it was time to finally bring this aspect of his character to light and discuss what could have been. This video does contain spoilers for all of Arc 2, so if you haven't yet finished Darkness of Dragons, then please click off the video. Also, before we begin, a huge shout out to my patrons. Crazy Roblox Man, Drag Lover 95, Springtail Productions, Three Moons, and Ortrix. Thank you so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Keebly's life unfortunately didn't start off easy. His mother, Cobra, was verbally and physically abusive to him, causing Keebly to seek validation and other opinions of him. He became so obsessed with proving himself to others and wanted to ensure that he was worth being kept around. Cobra did some neglect and abuse, as well as his constant tormenting by his siblings, caused Keebly to develop severe insecurity about himself that he still struggles with even to this day. What happened during his childhood has left scars and wounds so deep they may, they may never fully heal, and it was tragic to read about. To cope with his insecurities and the scars Karba left him with, Keebly tried playing off his discomfort by always wanting to be the center of attention and be liked by others. It took things incredibly far, and while he did wish to uplift the group and keep the spirits of his friends high, he had to punish himself if others didn't seem to like him. His internal self-worth would come to drastic low points, and he only felt like he mattered if Cobra, Thorn, Moon, or his friends cared about him. And if a dragon didn't enjoy his company, he really took it personally and thought of himself as not worth loving. So to avoid these feelings, he opted to wishing everyone loved him instead. Because of the childhood neglect he had as a younger dragonette, he really craved any kind of positive attention and would practically worship any dragon who gave it to him. He became obsessed with the idea of everyone liking him, even though he knew it was impossible. Because of this, Keebly found himself looking at other dragons differently. He became a total people pleaser to such an extreme that it damaged him severely and in devastating ways. When he realized he couldn't get everybody to like him, instead of shrugging off the fact and not letting it get to him, he dwelled in it his entire life. And so, Keebly started seeing others around him as threats. And at the point of him arriving at Jade Mountain Academy, Thorne was the biggest figure in his life because he felt as though she gave him purpose. Whoever was the central figure of his life and who he hoped could provide him that validation he craved, Keebly would do anything to please. And to make Thorne proud, he began to act like how she was during her outclaw days. As soon as he laid eyes on a dragon, Keebly would immediately do a threat assessment. He tried to read other dragons from he assumed their personality to be, even down to their mannerisms and abilities, and moments Keebly would see if any dragon in the room could be a threat, and what he should do in case of attack. But Keebly's desire for seeking validation and throws opinions of him didn't just end with trying to impress his loved ones. He continued to spread to where he didn't even just want those around him to like him. He wanted the entire world to. And that's where Animus Magic comes in. Keebly wasn't against Starstruck's spell that made other dragons like him. In fact, this is where we finally start to see into his thoughts and the darker parts of his mind that he wouldn't share with others, yet thought of frequently. Here's a passage of Keebly's thoughts after he learned a dark circus spell that he used in order for every dragon in power to be charmed by him. It's one of the first spells I thought of. If I'd gotten dark circus scroll, if I had all that power, first I'd protect my soul. Next, I'd cast spells to protect everyone I love. And then, I'd do a spell to make everyone like me. Even winter, even peril, even my family. Would that be wrong? I wouldn't abuse it the way dark circus has. I wouldn't be tricking anyone into doing the things I want them to do. I just want other dragons to like me, and some of them won't, no matter how hard I try. 
We can clearly see here that if given Anima's magic, Hilu would have prioritized a spell like this from the very beginning. It wasn't even because he saw what Darkstalker did and wished he had the same effect on the world. No. He openly admits right here this is something he's thought of. And because these thoughts were similar to what he had, Kibli didn't see the idea of forcing others to like you through magic as wrong. He thought of it as necessary in such a world where not everyone was going to care. But here's the key point. Kibli doesn't think he'll do anything bad with such power. Despite seeing how nearly every Animus Dragon in history has managed to be corrupted by their own thoughts, desires, the power they wielded, he thought he would be the exception. In a way, it's similar to some toxic relationships. For example, person A has cheated on all their partners in the past, but person B believes that they'll be the exception. They may have thoughts like, I can change them, or they wouldn't do it to me though, and I would know if they were doing it anyways, so I'll be fine. Take that and apply it to this situation. Despite the overall evidence that animus magic isn't worth the price you pay for it, through stories of the past, others' mistakes, and even dragons telling them to his face, Kibla just refused to believe he could ever do something like that. Isn't that how Darkstalker thought of himself, too? That he would never end up like his father, yet turned out to be exactly like him? Kibli is an exact repeat. He could have been the next Darkstalker, and it was right under our noses the entire time. He told himself, and genuinely believed, that he would never abuse his powers if he had them like Darkstalker. He thought of the same spells as he did. No one wants to believe they're the villain or the choices they make are wrong, but they can lead us on disastrous paths. It's just in our nature to think we're the exception. That what's happened to others won't happen to us because we're better or we're not going to abuse them, we promise. But no one can tell how they'd act in a situation like that unless they were living it. And Keebly didn't learn from Darkstalker's mistakes until the very end. Here are some more of Keebly's thoughts taken directly from his book. She doesn't trust me with them. She's like Turtle in Peril. She thinks I don't deserve magic or that I'll do something terrible with it. But I wouldn't. I'd be so careful. I'd think through everything that could go wrong before I did anything. And I'd have so many great ideas. I would've been the right dragon to take care of Dark Circus Scroll. I know I would've. No matter what Winter thinks. Wow. Imagine what would have happened if Keepley did say yes to Darkstalker. There was a reason why he tried to manipulate him with the proposition of magic and being able to feel the power in his claws. Keepley talked of all the goods he promised to do if he ever had such abilities, but Darkstalker saw through it, which is why he chose to use that to trick him. Not Moonwatcher, not Thorn. Power. The kind he could use to get what he wanted most. Despite what he claimed he would do, there's a good chance it wouldn't have actually happened that way. Darkstalker saw himself in the young salmon dragonette, most likely without even truly realizing it. Keebly didn't want to become Cobra, just how Darkstalker didn't want to become Arctic. Then Keebly didn't want to become Darkstalker, who didn't see him as a villain, even though he was. And yet, Keebly would have turned out the exact same way. Can't understand Darkstalker's way of thinking, yet they're so similar. And it happens in the real world, too. People often try to avoid becoming who they hate most, but in living a life of lust and greed, they end up ex becoming exactly like the person they promised they would never be. And then by the end of Keebly's story, we see him finally understand Darkstalker's flaws. And in a way, his own, too. In doing so, he finally sees what horrors and magic can bring. And then he has to ask himself the question, is it worth it? And he was met with the biggest temptation of all, right when he was trying to come to this conclusion for his own life. Given the opportunity, would he take that power, thinking its cost wouldn't apply to him? And he did get that opportunity sooner than he would have hoped, in the form of Darkstalker's offer. And Keebly said no. The answer shocked Darkstalker, and even Keebly himself. After all this internal struggle with dealing with his insecurities, wanting love, and feeling useless, he remembered what he loved most. His friends and family would love him even if nobody else did. So he said no. When he realized he did have dragons in his life who cared for him, it was such an emotional moment, and I felt completely break free from most of what had been keeping him from experiencing true joy in his life. Instead of being possessive over the attention of those he cared about, focusing on what others thought of him, he finally accepted the hard truth that not everything in life is going to work out exactly how he wants, and that's okay. Not every dragon is going to like him, but he has some in his life who do, 
and he appreciates them more than they could ever realize. And he came to terms about all of this just because he faces inner demons and said no to the most tempting offer in the world. If it weren't for his friends being there and talking sense at him, Kibli very well may have turned into the next Darkstalker. That kind of power falling in the talents of a dragon who was just about to come to the dragon he swore he would never be, Wings of Fire could have fallen down a dark path. Regardless, I think Keebly's tale truly is inspiring. At the point we've last seen in the story, he's been living a happy, content life alongside Moon. Instead of feeling jealous and bitter about the things he can't have, he focuses on what he does have. Keebly is so much more than just a lovable, inquisitive jokester with a heart of gold. And while he is those things, he's so much more. Discussing Keebly's greatest traits, I think his flaws also shouldn't go unnoticed. They're so key to his character development and how he became the dragon he is today, and I honestly appreciate it so much. So next time you think of Keebly the Sandwing, remember everything that has happened in his life that made him the true dragon he is. Because in reality, he's just a dragon who's trying to do better. Anyway, it's a pure tip this video. I felt like I just had to make this because of how I've seen the darker sides of Keebly's character tossed aside in nearly every piece of Wings of Fire media. And sure, it's great to see him at his best, but it's rare to see fans talk about him at his worst. So I challenge you guys to discuss the life of Keebly, how he overpowers negative thoughts, and what led him to finally being open about the true dragon he is. Because at his highest, he's often the dragon we know and love. In a lot of maps and other projects where they do tackle Keebly's inner demons, it's usually in the form of his childhood trauma and dealing with Cobra and Vulture, as well as his neglect and abuse. But I think most people overlook how close Keebly was to becoming the next Darkstalker. And to think the entirety of Wings of Fire could have been changed with one simple word. Yes. Keebly giving in. And in the moment where he was given a choice, that's when things finally became real to him. Instead of just thinking what he would do, he began to think of what he was going to do. The time of contemplating had come to an end, and he had to make his choice. Having the opportunity of all that power in his claws, you know, with everything that had happened to him since he originally decided the spell he would use to make everyone like him, it changed a part of him that day. I'm so grateful it did.